Hello everyone, we're at the Winchester Speedway, Dry Power 400 weekend. Just a few hours, the Dry Power 400, the prestigious race will be starting here at Winchester Speedway. I'm Gary Poindexter, announcer for the American Speed Association, in just a little bit different surrounding this morning. We're going to be watching a lot of action this afternoon. Mark Martin with a brand new track record, a new world's mark here at the half mile track. The first driver ever to get in the 15 second bracket, over 114 miles an hour. Lots of action on the track. But we thought that we would actually come out and visit with some of the fans here at the Winchester Speedway. One of the most notable things at Winchester is the sea of motorhomes that every year comes here to this small town and the Midwest and visits, visits the Dry Power 400. Some of the folks on hand this year, all the way from Odessa, Missouri, is Roy Morris on my right and his family to my left. And then Joe Wolfenbarker, also all the way from Odessa, Missouri, and his son Brent. They've traveled a lot of miles and they do so each and every event. Roy, this is not the first event that you've seen this year with the American Speed Association. You actually make quite a few of them. We've missed two so far this year. You, have, have you traveled a lot of years with the American Speed Association watching the races? For the past three years, yes. We've quit, uh, traveled several miles, following the biggest majority of the events. What makes a fellow travel that many miles to watch ASA racing? Well, when you watch an ASA race, Gary, uh, it just spoils you for the other races because there's so much action, the speed, and the competition. It's just unbelievable unless you've saw one of them. Well, who do you think is going to win the drive power this year? Oh, it could be any one of nine or ten drivers. Well, have you got a choice? Absolutely, I have my choice. I'd like to see Mark Martin take it. But uh, that's my opinion, and that doesn't always hold true. But well, we're going to see if Roy is correct in just a few minutes as the start of the Dry Power 400 will be starting and a lot of action here at the Winchester Speedway. We'll be back right after this commercial message. Winchester Marching Band now on the front stretch to perform for you. They took first place in their class in statewide competition. And here's a segment of their winning performance. And it's my pleasure to give the command this afternoon. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, it's Sunday afternoon, October the 5th, 1980, and time for the start of the 11th annual Dry Power 400. Gentlemen, let's go racing!
We look now up and down pit road, watching for the hands to be raised in the air. And most of the pit crewmen with the hands raised now, we don't see any cars having problems. The officials checking up and down pit road now to make sure that all of the cars are running properly. Howdy down there talking with Bob Sinegar. Hopefully there's no problem there. His headphones are off. They're checking with Bob and he's motioning for the pit crew. There is a problem with Bob Sinegar's car. People quickly moving around Bob's car and the hood is off five times. A former winner of the Dry Power 400 and how ironic it is this afternoon as Bob Sinegar is the one that's having the problems. It appears as though there's something wrong under the uh, hood and into the engine compartment. It doesn't appear as though there's any other problems up and down the long row of 36 cars to start the uh, left 11th annual Dry Power 400. Ray Baker in car number is now down with car number 84, the builder of Bob Sinegar's engines. And when you've got problems, you go to the man. Ray Baker down there now looking inside of the uh, engine compartment. Frank Collier also alongside. Frank, a former car owner with the American Speed Association, has owned a lot of cars. Appears as though the officials may be going to push Bob Sinecker out of the lineup. A very tough break for Bob. Of course, he could still get in. This doesn't mean that he's out of the race. They're just going to push him out of the way so that they can move the cars out. Don Johnson, the yellow number 24 car, towards the uh, number one turn pit area is the first alternate for this race. He's standing by and we're still waiting for the signal down there. The pit crewmen have left Bob's car. This may be an indication that it's running. We're watching now. We're getting the go sign and Bob Strait will be the first car out in his gumball colored number 88. Bob, of course, will be first out because of Mark Martin's fast qualifying time. He had the option to pick the outside or the inside, and obviously Mark has gone for the outside of this race course, that being much quicker. Bob Sinecker in car number 84 now moving under his own power, and whatever those problems were evidently have been corrected, and he's out onto the track. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about ready for the start. Here they come down, the green flag, and we're underway. The car's on their way now. And Mark Martin in car number two in the lead. Mike Eddy quickly moving up on the outside, moving up into second position. Bob Strait dropping back into third position in car number 88. And LJ Lines in car number 76 running in fourth position. Bob Sinecker and Bob Sensaba battling it out side by side for that number five position. Then it's Terry Sinecker in car number 37 and Randy Sweet in car number five. All the cars running uh, safely now as they make their way around. A very tight race at the front. All cars handling themselves very, very well. But Mark Martin really turning on the power now as he stands on the gas here at Winchester Speedway, making his way around. Mike Eddy charging up into that number two spot quickly in the brown and yellow number 88. And the yellow and reddish orange number 88 of Bob Strait right behind him on the race course. L.J. Lines running in fourth position now in car number 76, and it's Bob Sensaba in car number three. So Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas, the 1977 Rookie of the Year with the American Speed Association, later to come back in 1978 to win the championship at the tender age of 19 and to repeat it at age 20 in 1979 in the lead of the Dry Power 400 here. Mark has had a phenomenal year in 1980, and he's doing very well so far in the dry power. His car is totally dominant in this field as he has had a very quick lap at 15.74 seconds for a new track and world record here at the Winchester Speedway. We were talking earlier about Mark Martin, as strong as his car is running, and the fact that he knows that uh, Dick Trickle and Bob Sinegar are the two main threats to him. We were calculating that Mark probably would like to uh, catch Dick back in the back of the pack and quickly put a lap on him. Do you think that this is going to be possible? Well, um, of course, anything's possible here in the high speeds that these cars are traveling around this Winchester Speedway. Uh, 
anything is possible. We see Mark is, uh, he's not holding back. He's running pretty tough. We're watching Mark Martin still in the lead. Mike Eddy is running in second position. L.J. Lines is running third. Lines is giving her quite a ride today. I know he was really pumped up for this race, and uh, if he stays out of trouble, he should put together a really good finish here today. Well, down the front stretch, Ron Hayes in car number 14 has slowed down. But as we said, Mark Martin still in the lead, as he has from the green flag of this in car number two, followed by Mike Eddy in car number 88. L.J. Lines now running third in car number 76, followed by Bob Sitsaba in car number three. And Bob Strait is running fifth in car number 88, the yellow and reddish-orange car. And then it's Bob Sineker in car number 84. So that's the leaders of the race at this point, very early in this year's Dry Power 400. These drivers all up for the Dry Power as they are each and every year. Appears as though Ron Hayes in car number 14 has had problems, his car overheating early. One of the first casualties of the race this afternoon as he is in, the pit crew is checking out the car, but it appears as though he may be out of the race. That time we saw Dave Jensen brushing that outside retaining wall. Really, that doesn't mean all that much, with the exception it's probably just a scare to Dave. Harold Scott now in car number 96 has come into the pits. His pit crew are checking with him to make sure that uh, possibly that uh, problem can be corrected. And Bob Sensaba now tests LJ Lines and not only tests him, but gets around him for that number three position. Bob Sensaba in car number three taking away third from LJ Lines, but he and LJ both are in a lot of traffic as they make their way down the backstretch. And that time, three abreast going into turn number three. And Bob Sensaba holding his own, doing a great job of driving that time, showing how he's going to take third from LJ Lines. LJ now running fourth in car number 76, with Bob Strait now running fifth in car number 88. Bob Sensaba did a great job of driving that time, Dave, as he made his way around three abreast down the backstretch to take away that number three spot from LJ Lines. Bob Sensaba has come on his own all of a sudden with the American Speed Association. Yeah, Bob has been running really good. Uh, it uh, That's just another point that attributes to how this racetrack, how competitive things are here today. Uh, they can run two abreast through here without too much trouble, and when the pressure's really on, they can see they can make her work three abreast. So. Uh, this is absolutely wide open racing. Well, Mark Martin, as we can see, is coming up right behind Dick Trickle, and he may get that one lap that he's wanting. Yeah, it's not. Uh, Trickle's been bound up in traffic, and Mark has been running pretty free, and uh, he's really closing the gap on him. So uh, this could be a this could be a big factor in the race. Well, well, Bob Sineker in his normal style, dropping back in the race, started in third position. I'm not sure right now where he's running, but probably. We'll check now, Martin right now going by with Mike Getty behind him second. Third is Bob Sensaba, fourth is Bob Strait, then fifth is LJ Lines. Appears as though Bob Sinegar is running sixth in car number 84. This is sort of his style though. He doesn't get in too big of a hurry early in a race. Yeah, probably about the only time we would be able to watch Bob Sinegar get in a hurry was at the Minnesota Fair here a couple races ago. He started in the back and had to run through there to get in the race. But well, Mike Eddy now right behind Mark Martin, and uh, I would think, knowing Mike Eddy's past style, he probably would like to go ahead and take the lead of this race early. Do you agree? Yeah, Mike is a charger, to say the least. Uh, he's out there charging all the time. He hates to run second if he can run first, but uh, with as much traffic as going on there, I'm sure that he's kind of content to pick along there. But you see where he might have a lead change coming down the back straightaway right now. Yeah, it sure looks like it's a big traffic jam, and Mark Martin and Bob's, uh, or I should say Mike Eddy, just got passed by Bob Sensaba in car number three, and boy, he you really see, sneaked up on you him. You see, Bob put that same movie put on L.J. Lyons there a little while ago. He went down the inside around the bottom of this racetrack, and them guys didn't even know where he was. And Mike Eddy just did the same thing to Mark Martin and caught him in slower traffic, and it looks like we got a car about to let go, Dick Dunleavy Jr. in car number five with a trail of smoke behind his car as he makes his way down the backstretch. There's a little break for Dick Trickle there. He was really struggling to stay ahead of these guys, and uh, it's going to give him a chance to get around there and get caught up. It's going to put a lot of traffic between him and the leaders, obviously. He's about the next one to get lapped, but uh, it's, it's going to help him, obviously. Well, 50 laps have been completed. 
Bob Sensaba, a surprise leader here this afternoon. It's a Dry Power 400 in car number three, followed by Mike Eddy in car number 88 in second position, and running third is Mark Martin in car number two. And we'll be back right after this commercial message. Still early in the 11th annual Dry Power 400, but Bob Sensaba from Middleville, Michigan. In the lead now in his Weaver and Corral, m and Automotive Camaro. And Bob Strait is now having problems. Smoke coming from the rear of his car. So Bob Strait is slowing down, coming back in the pits. The second fastest qualifier. The only other driver that had broken the track record of Randy Sweets. Dave Watson, Bob is in, he's got problems. He's got a left rear tire went flat on a yellow. I don't know if some trash on a racetrack or what it is, but uh, he needs a left rear tire and uh, they got problems now. Yeah, they've got the gas can that's hooked in the car and they're trying to get that out. Bob yeah, trying to get back They had out. a terrible mix up there in the pits. The, uh, the left rear tire is flat, they got the gas can stuck in there. This is gonna definitely put him out of race for today. Did they get the tire actually changed? No, they didn't see it. Uh, he was hollering on the radio. We're scanning him up here in the left rear. He was yelling about that being flat, and I see that it was real squashy when he pulled in here. And they were geared up to change the right side, and they didn't. Uh, they didn't realize what it was in time. So evidently, B Bob Strait will be coming back in shortly, back into the pits. A tough break for Bob and his crew, and as we predicted, he's right back in. And that left rear tire now is almost all the way flat. This time they see it, Dave. Maybe they'll get it changed. Yeah, he was. Uh, I heard him on the radio. They were they were talking about it, and uh, they just uh, it was so unexpected after the yellow. But this is the kind of stuff that uh, where the experience shows up, and uh, you win and lose races. Uh, the guys were all prepped up, thinking about right side tires, and uh, it happened so fast that they weren't ready for it, and uh, it uh, it put them behind here in this race. Well, Bob. Did as good in qualifying here for the Dry Power 400 as he has in a long, long time. Pit problems, and we got a crash coming out of turn number four. And we got cars still sliding and spinning. Ken Harrison involved in car number 77. And Doug Klein, Mickey Flora, several cars. John Martin also involved, but John is moving in car number 39. We're watching now to try to see what all was involved or what actually started the accident. Dave, did you see it start? Yeah, I saw it start. Uh, Ken Harrison got a little sideways up there and he got hooked up with, uh, I tell you what, the excitement was so fast and furious, I don't know who it was, but he had him hooked sideways. And uh, rather than a guy going all the way around, uh, we've seen some pretty horrendous accidents here. And this, uh, he just kind of pushed him along there until he got slowed down and it didn't really block the track. Uh, these guys come around there at 125, 30 mile an hour, no place to go. And uh, we had a couple of three cars get in this thing. And I don't think anything is too serious except for Harrison who uh, got sideways and got run into, got tapped and uh, slid around a racetrack. He's got extensive body damage, but I don't believe even the car is that bad. So uh, it uh, it's one of these things. Uh, this place is uh, like in the Daytona Beach. There's no such thing as a small accident at the Winchester Speedway. Uh, if you get in trouble here going 125, 30 miles an hour and come out of it in one piece, you've really done a job. So uh, the way things have been going on here, uh, it was pretty uh, a pretty minor incident when you'd really stop and take into consideration just how big and how bad it could have been. Well, looking down there, trying to figure out some of the cars that were involved, as you said, Ken Harrison in car number 77. Former Dry Power winner Dave Sorg in car number 29 was also involved. He since pulled away, uh, as did John Martin in car number 39. He also was involved, but pulled back out. Mickey Flora was involved in car number 30. He pulled away. There's a gumball colored car involved down there, but frankly, I'm not quite sure who, who it was. It was not Bob Strait, though, I can tell you, because Bob came in uh, to the pits again and uh, he's back out on the track, but now Mark Martin is in in car number two. So he's made another pit stop and uh, again changing that right side rubber. He's evidently not satisfied the way that car's handling. No, it appears that he's, uh, he's not satisfied at all. They're going after that right rear again, and uh, with the conditions we got here today, you know, we've only got eight tires to work with, and uh, it's pretty early on in the race to be using up all your rubber. So this could be a very important factor to let us know the outcome of this race here. He's using up some tires pretty fast, and uh, if he hasn't got that chassis dueled right in there, uh, it could be a long day for Mark Martin. 
It looks like Randy Sweet was also involved in that crash, Dave, and uh, Randy's right in front of our position here at the uh, Winchester Speedway. Randy's out of the car looking at the front end, so evidently he got involved in that also. Yeah, it doesn't look good for Randy. He's out of the car looking it over, and uh, if there's any chance for him to get back in his show, obviously he's going to be back in it, and uh, Randy's got to know for himself just how bad things are, you know. Uh, He's, uh, he's like that other guy, that Dick Trickle. He never gives up, and uh, if, the car can't, if the car can't do 100%, uh, Randy will make up for what's lacking. So he's got to see how bad this is and see what he needs to do to make up the, the deficit maybe that the car's handing him now, and uh, he's going to take a look at it. If he can get back in it, I'm sure he's going to be there. Well, Bob Sensaba from Middleville, Michigan, the leader of this race in car number three. Mike Eddy is running second in car number 88. And third is Bob Sineker in car number 84. Bob Sensiba, what do you like best about the Dry Power 400? Well, I always like the, the high banks anyway, so it's the long races. I like them real well. What do you dislike about it? Uh, really, it's nothing except for you got such a difference in times on the slower cars and the faster cars. That's the only really disadvantage to the whole thing. If you've got two drivers, that you think about the most as far as the fiercest competition out there. Who are they? Well, you know Bob's won this several times. And uh, another one, Martin, he's running fast. So Bob Sineker in 84 and Mark Martin in two. Yes, right. We are anticipating green flag once again. Start. Green flag back out here at the Winchester Speedway with Bob Sensiba in the lead in car number three. Mike Eddy still running in second position in car number 88 with Bob Sineker running third in car number 84. Terry Sineker in car number 37, Bob's younger brother running in fourth position as they make their way around this half mile high bank track. The dust that you see on the race course, of course, is from the oil dry that was put down earlier. And we have another crash in turn number one, Harold Scott has crashed and Jack Shanklin has slammed into him. Harold Scott in car number 96 really slamming into the inside retaining wall, careening across the track, and then Jack Shanklin in car number 57 T-boned him up on the outside of the track in turn number one. And Dave, that could have been a bad one. I don't know what happened there for sure. I see that about the time I see him, and he was hitting the inside retaining wall down there, and a piece was flying off the car. I know he hit her pretty hard. Well, it looked like Jack Shanklin just totally unable to avoid the accident. You know, yeah, the Jack had her locked up. You see, the tires was smoking before he ever hit him. He had a brake sign and was committed to that line and had decided that he had to get her going as slow as he possibly could when he hit him because it was inevitable. Well, I'm sure what flies through Harold Scott's mind was back in 1976, the Memorial Day race here, when they had a tremendously large fire out of turn number four. Harold spent many months in the hospital with fire burns and, of course, uh, since then came back, I think even the latter part of that season, coming back to race with us. But Harold is courageous. Unfortunately, he won the Best Looking Car Award here for the Dry Power 400, and now all of a sudden it's uh, practically destroyed sitting down there in turn one. Bob Strait, what do you like the best about the Dry Power 400? Well, number one, the track, and number two, all the people that come here. It gives you a good feeling when there's this many people watching us put on a show for them. It gives us a good feeling, too. What do you dislike about it? That I haven't won it yet. <laughs> If you've got two drivers out here that you're worried about as far as your toughest uh, competition, who are they by name? Well, there's a bunch of tough ones, but I'd say the two toughest ones is Mark Martin and Bob Seneca. I would say they're, they run strong here all the time. 190 laps completed, and the green flag is back out. Terry Seneca is in the lead with Don Gregory in car number seven running second. Terry driving that blue and white number 37 racing machine, younger brother to Bob Sinegar. But we're also watching now as Don Gregory goes to the inside, diving low on the inside, side by side with Terry Sinegar now, trying to get around him. And at that time, it appeared as though he really clinched it down tight. That right rear was uh, smoking on the, on the car. Yeah, he slowed him. He slowed the both of them down to such a point that Mike Eddy run right up on him and trying to get one of his laps back. Well, the race goes on between Terry Sineker and Don Gregory down the front stretch. Bob Sineker trying to hold on to third. Mark Martin running fourth in car number two with Dick Trickle 
running fifth in car number 99. That's your top five. We've got a lead change as Don Gregory has moved around Terry Seneker. And Don now trying to put some distance between he and second place Terry Seneker, but Terry are try, trying to hang on now. For Don Gregory, the defending champion of the Dry Power 400, winning this race in 1979, taking his familiar purple and white Jegs high performance number seven Camaro around the high banks here at Winchester Speedway in the lead with Terry Sinegar in pursuit now in second position in car number 37. They're on the same lap and then behind them with only one car separating them is Bob Sinegar in car number 84 and Mark Martin in car number two. Dick Trickle on the same lap in fifth in car number 99. We have 200 laps completed. The halfway point, this is still a wide open battle. You see those first two cars that come by the start finish line, Mike Eddy and Bob Sensaba, are in fact putting distance. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Don Martin causing the yellow flag to come out. John has since come back into the pit area. In the meantime, Don Gregory, the new leader of the race in car number seven, with Terry Seneker running in second position. Now this, in fact, was a big break for Mike Eddy and Bob Sensaba. They're going around here and uh, getting good track position back. I believe they're about two laps down. This is going to really help them to the point to get them back into this race. We're over the halfway mark now with 200 plus laps completed and we're back under the green flag. Don Gregory sets sail in car number seven, but Terry Sinegar right behind him in car number 37. With Bob Sinegar in pursuit now in car number 84 as he makes his way down low on the track. And Mark Martin right behind him in car number two. Mark running in fourth position. Dick Trickle is running in fifth in car number 99, but Dick is running easily, casually around the race course, holding his own, not taking any type of chance to get in any kind of trouble. So Dick has driven probably one of the headiest races of any driver here this afternoon. Don Gregory in the lead in car number seven. Terry Sinegar in car number 37 running in second position. You know, we talked earlier, Dave, about Don Gregory and his pit crew. They were talking about coming in changing four tires. The yellow flag was out, but they didn't take advantage of it. Yeah, I've lost track. I don't know when Don has been in the pit. I don't know how much gas he's possibly got, but uh, Apparently it's not affecting him right now because he's just driving away from Bob or well, all three of them guys from uh, Terry, Bob and Mark and um, got things pretty well under control. Well, Don Gregory driving his own race in his own style, weaving in and out of slower traffic, continuing in the lead with Terry Seneger in pursuit with Terry's older brother, Bob, right behind him. But they None of them so far can catch the faster moving Don Gregory. Don didn't start up as uh, far in the race as some of the other drivers out on the track. He started 14th position and he's moved up to take the lead. Terry Sinegar running second, Bob Sinegar running third. The fact that they're brothers, do you think Bob would just let him run there for any reason? I have to doubt it. I don't think that that enters into anything when they drop the screen flag. Uh, you know, you have a great respect for one another and uh, rely on one another in the racetrack, but I don't think there's anything that would uh, stand in the way the, as competitive as either one of those two brothers are that uh, I don't think it would be any factor in uh, letting one ride or the other one ride. It'd be wide open. It probably might be uh, might work just exactly the opposite because uh, because of the brother aspect. And while we're talking about it, Bob Sinegar dives low through turns three and four and supports your opinion of that as Bob Sinegar gets around Terry Sinegar for that number two spot. So now we have a second place change. Don Gregory continues to lead, but now Bob Sinegar is in a position now to try to reel in first place Don Gregory. So maybe Bob Sinegar has said, you know, I've sat here long enough. I've got to catch Gregory if at all possible. Yeah, that's, uh, and I'm sure that he's looking behind him. He sees Mike Eddy coming, who in fact, both Mike Eddy and, and Bob Sensaba have passed 
Ray Young and are back up into the fifth and sixth place spots in this race. And uh, only a matter of time if they get back around that leader now, they're going to be right back in that lead lap. So uh, maybe the pressure from behind is as much as anything that's playing on Bob Seneca for the need to get going and uh, make sure that those guys don't get any unfair advantage and get caught up on him. But Don Gregory has continued to lead the race for several laps now. Even though Bob Seneca has closed at different intervals of the race, so far really has not got into a challenging position. Dave, what do you feel about Mark Martin running back in fourth position now? Do you think that uh, he'll be trying to make a move shortly? Well, I'm sure that he's thinking about it. Uh, he can see the first three cars right there ahead of him, and uh, he might be content to ride at that point at right now. Uh, well, there it looks now. <laughs> as soon as we start talking about him, they must get the message and away they go. It looks like he, in fact, has got by. Terry Seneca moving down the back straightaway, so it uh, looks like that he's realized that he can't let Bob or Gregory get that far ahead of him. So now Mark driving a very safe race has decided to back off a little bit because of Rob Magoon running a little bit slower there. And uh, Mark so far has still not gotten around Terry Seneca. The other question, I guess, would be Dick Trickle. Dick is running uh, uncommonly calm out there on the race course, and these guys are about to have a lap ahead of him. Yeah, I'm sure that he's not calm, but he's uh, he's running out there about about half a lap off the pace, and uh, that's very unlike Dick Trickle. He must have some problem that he just can't get on top of today because he's having uh, he's just about in fact a half a lap behind. And uh, if it wouldn't be for these caution flags coming as frequently as they have this afternoon, he would in fact be behind. Well, it appears as though we can be watching for a move that will be coming fairly recently now from Bob Sineker trying to get around Don Gregory for that lead but Don is moving swiftly around this race course I haven't got any clocks on Don but it appears as though he's not letting any grass grow under his feet no he's running real oh there goes trickles motor trickle just popped her coming right down the front straight away here it doesn't look like it's too big a problem but uh, apparently that smoke we saw early in the afternoon it's uh, one of these things in this business it doesn't hardly ever repairs itself in a situation like this and uh, apparently he was his strategy was to nurse it along and prolong the agony as long as possible and uh, we witnessed it coming down the front straight away give her a big puff of smoke and I'm sure that's going to be the end of the day for him. Well Dick Trickle is in running in fifth position the uh, smoke trailing the car the yellow flag is out for his car we talked to Dick earlier prior to the uh, start of the race and we had uh, several of his comments from him as to his likes and dislikes of the Dry Power 400. Dick Trickle, what do you like the most about the Dry Power 400? Well, it's a big race. It has a lot of prestige, a lot of fans, and it's uh, just a prestigious race. It's usually warm down here. It's a nice day today. What do you dislike about the Dry Power? Yeah, if your car isn't handling, that can be torture out there for 400 laps. But if the car is working all right, it's okay. But the biggest thing I worry about is not having my caster camper right and the car steering wheel heavy and over 400 laps. If there's any two drivers that you worry about the most as far as your toughest competition, who would they be? Well, I'd have to say right now, and at this date, between uh, Bob Seneca and Mark Martin, not necessarily in that order and not multiple choice. The green flag is back out. Mike Eddy and Bob Sensaba trying to make up some ground now as they're on the same lap. They got a whole race course now to move back around. And Terry Sineker back in the lead by virtue of all of those pit stops that took place. All four of the previous leaders coming in. And look at Mark Martin. Mark Martin blows by Bob Sineker and Terry Sineker to take the lead. And Martin moved by almost like those cars were tied to a post. Mark Martin really moved around quick now as Mark Martin establishes himself as a very strong front runner now as he's in the lead of this race. So Mark's in the lead, Bob Sinegar's running second, Terry Sinegar is running third, and then it's Don Gregory. So Mike Eddy now running in fifth position with Bob Sensaba running sixth, but Mark Martin blows by them, and psychologically, Dave, this has got to 
play on somebody's mind when you go around that fast. Well, you obviously, we saw that uh, that 29 car really got in the way there and blocked up that high speed lane and Mark saw what was taking place, trapped those guys up there in the high speed lane. A 29 car was out there, no business up there in that high speed lane and blocked the race up. And it, uh, it was a good break for Mark but it kind of kind of hurt the rest of this race here because it spread them guys out and let Mark get way ahead. Well, Bob Sinegar certainly got his work cut out for him now as there's a lot of car links separating he and the leader, Mark Martin. Mark has set sail and his orange and white number two is running extremely strong now with Bob Sinegar in pursuit in car number 84. Terry Sinegar still running third in car number 37 with Don Gregory running fourth in car number seven. And Mike Eddy running fifth in car number 88. Sixth is Bob Sensaba in car number three. Sensaba and Eddy running on the same lap now trying to catch the leaders. And Martin running now like he did here a couple of days ago in qualifying when he set that new track record. Running as strong as I've seen him run in a long, long time. And he continues to put distance between he and second place, Bob Sinegar. And it appears as though Martin is running flawlessly now and pulling away from Bob. Yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like the car's in pretty good shape. He's running real smooth. Doesn't look like he's got much trouble sitting in there pretty relaxed. And uh, he's got, in fact, about just about a whole corner ahead of the second, third, and fourth place cars. Dave, if you're Terry Sinegar and Don Gregory at this point, knowing that probably if Martin and Bob Sinegar want to, they do have what appears to be the stronger cars. Well, Mark has had a phenomenal year with the American Speed Association, taking on uh, the Dillon chassis for 1980, as well as staying with the Baker engines. Yeah, and it looks like he might have a little trouble. Uh, we just heard on the radio that he thinks that the right front tire is going flat, so this could really put him in a trouble. You see the activity down there in the pits. Uh, Mark is just hanging on there, holding his own. This is a situation that you can't leave unattended, obviously, for the simple fact that uh, this tire, if that right front tire goes flat, you'd have an awful ride if that tire would go flat here today. So an uh, awful lot of tires, awful lot of tires today, and it's making this race extremely complicated for these drivers. Well, once again, it shows why it's so unusual for anybody to win more than one a dry power 400 because virtually everything can go wrong and in the case of some of the drivers today i think everything has gone wrong throughout today and now mark martin has just come into the pits he has lost the lead and uh, terry sinegar is now the lead and it appears as though there's another miscommunication it's the left front on him too we watch bob sinegar get in the same situation Trying the right front, it's in fact a left front. I don't know what, the, maybe the tires are too soft and they're burning them off, but uh, he's in fact a lap down now. Well, whatever it was, they finally got the word that it was a left front. I can't believe that they're having that bad of a communication. It, do they just, it's just automatically always the right side? Well, it, you know, you have to think that it's the right side. There he goes for two laps down, and uh, it's really putting those guys in a bind. That's leaving Terry Seneca and Don Gregory. The only people in this race at this point in time, not to discount Mike Eddy and Bob Sensaba. So uh, in, a, in a very short period of time, there he goes back. Now he's going to get one of them laps back, it looks like. Mark Martin lost two laps. He's gained one of them back now. He's one lap down plus the whole race course now. We will, in fact, see how strong that Dylan Baker Camaro is at this point because he's going to be running that baby wide open now. The other thing is confuses it even more it's where Bob Sinegar is. It's, it's hard to say where Bob Sinegar is on the race course at this time as he also lost laps in the pits. Yeah, that, uh, that guy, both them guys are about in the same situation here. I'm going to check with these officials and see if we can get a word on this thing. Well, Mike Eddy all of a sudden is certainly strongly back in this race. Eddy running third right behind Don Gregory as they uh, make their way through turn number four and the traffic is really heavy and Mike Eddy goes down on the inside as he gets around Don Gregory. So the race is for that number one spot and Mike Eddy challenging for that number one spot now as he gets into second position around Don Gregory. And Terry Sinegar holding his own but Mike Eddy charging now 
trying to get around the leader, Terry Seniger, in his white and blue number 37. Eddie on his back bumper now as they make their way down the backstretch into turns three and four. And it appears as though we may have a new leader here shortly. Mike Eddy and his Munning Brothers Camaro strongly challenging Terry Seneker now for the lead as Bob Seneker back there trying to get around Don Gregory. Bob is trying to unlap himself. Communications a problem this afternoon here at the Dry Power 400 as Bob Seneker and Mark Martin both losing uh, laps in the pit area during the running of the Dry Power. And Bob trying to unlap himself now. And Mike Eddy in the meantime with a slingshot down low and around Terry Seneger. And we have a new leader, Mike Eddy in car number 88, getting around Terry Seneger. And Dave, you talked about Mike Eddy being in a good position a while ago, but it's even better than what we'd suspected. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been running pretty good. He's been, uh, he's been behind and he's been in front. He followed Bob Sensabar around there early on in the race. It looked like he had car enough to do whatever he needed to do and uh, now he's made up the deficit of being behind having a flat tire and has now got to lead again so it uh, this is I'm sure this is going to be some kind of record for lead changes and uh, number of caution flags because this has really been wide open racing right now I can see Bob Seneca down inside of, of Don Gregory and track trying to get by him so uh, there's a there's a, any number of races they might not all be for the lead but they are they're uh, Sure is a lot of action on the racetrack with with individual races to say that's really an action-packed afternoon. Well, Dave, we got 292 laps completed. That's just a little over 100 laps to go. Well, Mike Eddy in the lead in car number 88. Terry Sinegar is running second. We're talking with a fellow up here that had some problems earlier, Dick Trickle. Dick, what happened to your car? Uh, the drive sump bump went bad. It wouldn't return the oil into the tank, and I ended up running low on oil pressure. Did you have any indication this was going to happen earlier in the laps? I was having trouble the whole race with it, and uh, so I was keeping my eye on it. She finally filled the pan right up with oil, and I didn't, didn't get any oil pressure. Well, you and I talked earlier about this race. We felt like you were going to be uh, involved with... Uh, Bob Sinegar and Mark Martin, that would be the three servers to the top. You've had mechanical problems. Mark Martin has had communications problems, as has uh, Bob Sinegar. Now, all of a sudden, Mike Eddy is servicing. What's your feelings on the race now? Well, I'm not sure. I was talking here, but I guess they, uh, uh, they, they're claiming that they're both a lap down, uh, Sinegar and Martin, so it's going to be a pretty interesting race because they are the quickest ones on the track. They might be able to make it up. Especially if the yellow comes out. We've noticed, we've noticed here this afternoon there's been an awful lot of tire trouble. People, there must be an awful lot of trash out there today cutting down tires. We've had uh, both, uh, like uh, Gary said, both those guys came in thought they had right side tires and the left fronts were flat. Uh, what did you notice out there when you were still there? The track was real clean when we started the race. Bob Sineker has blown a tire and another crash here yet this afternoon and the Bluebird has crashed in turn number four and it appears as though he's out of the race for the day. As I was saying before, what the, the track started out was a real clean track, but uh, everybody knows there's been a lot of wrecks and there's a, quite a bit of debris, and they pick everything up they can see, but there's a lot of stuff that you can't see that they don't get, and I think the crashes that from the early stages of the race are what's cutting the tires down. Bob Seneker, what do you like best about the Dry Power 400? Winning it. What do you dislike <laughs> about the Dry Power? Uh, failing to finish. And if you've got two drivers out there that you feel are your toughest competitor, who are they? Oh, the kid. He might be in there. You never know. And Trickle. Meaning Mark Martin and uh, the white knight, Dick Trickle. Yeah. The strategy gets extremely confusing. We see the leader in the pits and back out, Mike Eddy with the Munning Brothers crew. As I recall, they were in early in the race that caused them to drop. Uh, a lap down. I can't remember exactly what they the problems had, were. They had to come off of a yellow flag situation, went a couple laps, and he cut, and he had a flat tire, had to stop on the green after they come through about a four or five lap caution period. Uh, same thing happened to Bob Strait, if we remember right. And uh, it uh, it's just a one of those things, you know. There's a there's a lot involved here. We check and double check and triple check and plan and connive and get ready for these races, but uh, the determining factor in a lot of these situations is a race and luck involved. 
Well, while we talk, the green flag comes back out, and Don Gregory must be in the lead of this race as he did not pit. Again, we talked earlier about him coming in taking on four tires. He may have done that, but if so, I missed it. There has been so many things that have gone on, but at least we know he didn't come in that time, and he's got to be the leader. Yep, he's got the leader, and he's got Martin breathing right down his tail trying to get that lap back to get him in this race. Well, one thing I know for sure, Mike Eddy has four new shoes on his car. He came in twice. He took on right side, then he took on left side. And so Mike Eddy is running extremely strong. Mark Martin is running strong enough to unlap himself. But the question remains, should have uh, Don Gregory pitted or not? I guess we're going to find out at the end of 400 laps. Yeah, she's going to be. I don't know how long that he can run. I don't know when he pitted last. So that strategy is going to be a really a important factor in the who wins this race here today. Well, Mark Martin just got around Don Gregory. Have you kept up on how many laps he actually was down? Is he on the same lap, or is he still one lap down no, now? No, he's, in fact, on the same lap. He's got to go around the racetrack again and pass him to take the lead, but he ought to be running fourth or fifth, whichever it is. Let's see. There's uh, We're looking at Don Gregory and then Mike Eddy and then Terry Seneker and then, in fact, Mark Martin. So Mark will be running fourth in the same lap, but he's a whole racetrack behind. So Don Gregory in the lead with Mike Eddy running in second position. Is that what you said? Yeah, Mike Eddy must be second. Terry Seneca should, in fact, be third. So Mark Martin trying to play catch up now, and there's still several laps left in this race. The strange thing about this, you see the, the complexion, the, the uh, look on Bob Seneca's face is not one of dejection or failure or anything else. He's as calm and cool as he ever could be. He's looking a thing over to see if the car can be fixed. The rest of the guys are thrashing around there and working wide open, and Bob is still surveying the damages to see if he can get this car back in the show. Well, we've checked with the official scorers. Don Gregory, the leader, with Mike Eddy right behind him. Mike Eddy right on the back bumper of Don Gregory. Terry Sinegar running third in car number 37 with uh, Bob Sensaba running fourth in car number three. Mark Martin is running fifth in car number two. There's a 14-second separation between the leader, Don Gregory, and Mark Martin. We have clocks running on that, Dave, as it appears as though we're going to see Mark Martin closing in on the leader, Mike Eddy. Or I should say Don Gregory. Don Gregory being challenged at the present time by Mike Eddy. Mike Eddy slingshots off of turn number two now as he goes low down the backstretch. And we have a new leader. Don Gregory has taken the lead. Don Gregory has dropped back into second. Mike Eddy has taken the lead. Mike Eddy in car number 88 in the lead. Don Gregory is running in second position. And Terry Sinegar continues third in car number 37 followed by... Bob Sensaba in car number three, and then it's Mark Martin fifth in car number two, and Ray Young, who's been running strong, has to come in for a pit stop. What's the problem, Dave? Well, we noticed that there was a lot of sparks coming off the front of the left front wheel there, and uh, apparently some of the ballast, some of the weight has come loose, and it was dragging, sparking around there, and these chunks weigh anywhere from uh, 40 to 100 pounds, so it's obviously a situation that ASA couldn't leave happen, and they had to get him in here to get this thing corrected. Why does a driver put those in the car? Well, these cars today, you know, uh, they are built right wide open to the limits. And uh, the construction is as up to date and the aerodynamics, we see them changing from race to race to go faster. And uh, the cars, we're carrying more and more left side weight. And to do that, they've lightened the cars up to whatever is safe. And then they're putting the ballast on the left side. And we can see evidence by track records falling all season long being the fastest stock car circuit in the country today. And uh, this is just one of the reasons, obviously, as these cars are geared up wide open race cars today. We've seen lots of lack of communication this afternoon. Again, the pit crews also get all psyched up for this race and has been evidence this afternoon, sometimes so psyched up that it runs into communication problems, which of course ends up in errors in the pit crews. Not only does this happen in the lesser uh, pit crews by the back markers, but also, as was evidenced this afternoon, by the front runners. An example, Bob Seneker, Bob Strait, and uh, Mark Martin.
those drivers having their problems. They're out on the race course now. Martin has overcome most of his problems, with the exception, even though he's on the same lap, he hasn't gone back to take the lead. We have uh, 10.9 seconds separating the leader and Mark Martin at this time. So earlier it was a 13 second separation between uh, the leader and Mark Martin, and now it's cut down to almost 11 seconds. So Martin is slowly but surely closing in on Mike Eddy. Yeah, I don't believe it's going to be a long afternoon for him to get caught up by this point. You know, uh, it's a long ways behind. Uh, Mike is de as determined as anybody out here. And uh, he's as determined that this race has eluded him in the past, and he's sitting in good shape right now. Don Gregory's running a cool second. Terry is, seems to be fading a little bit in third here, and Mark is closing up on him. So uh, if, uh, if this thing continues to go green these last 75 laps, um, I do not believe that Mark can do it at this time. But uh, should we get another yellow flag? And we got trouble again. Terry Sinecker has spun. And we have the yellow flag. Terry Sinecker has spun. That was a surprise. Mike Eddy had uh, just lost a lap to Mike Eddy just uh, prior to the yellow flag coming up. And something that was strange about it, you know, earlier I told you that Don Gregory was slowing down just as a yellow come out. You and I talked about it. Again, it looked like Don Gregory had slowed down. Possibly he sees these things going on over there in turn four. Maybe he passes them or something. It's the reason he slows down. Well, he's a pretty cagey driver, to say the least. And he's uh, he's got a lot of, lot of experience on these high bank tracks. Uh, things high happen real, real fast. And a, a little bump is something that you can't overcome. Mike Eddy, what do you like best about the Dry Power 400? It's got to be the high banks of the Winchester racetrack. What do you dislike most? The length of the race. If there's two drivers that you worry about, your toughest competitors, who are they? Uh, I'd say Bob Seneker and Mark Martin. The green flag back out now as Mike Eddy is in the lead in car number 88. Followed right on his tail now is Mark Martin in car number two. And it's going to be a race to the finish between these two veterans with the American Speed Association. Mike Eddy, who's won the championship two previous times, and Mark Martin, who has also won the championship a couple of times before. His, of course, being in 78 and 79, the most current. Dave, 25 laps to be exact. That's what it's boiling down to. 25 laps to go. Mark Martin and Mike Eddy testing their skills out on the track now. Eddy still in the lead. Martin carefully staying behind him whenever there's slower traffic ahead so as to not crash, as Dave Watson has already pointed out. These drivers are afraid of what may be out on that race course. They've seen blown tires. They've also experienced them earlier in the race this afternoon. They've overcome problems, but yet they're out there now running at top speed with Mark Martin trying to get around Mike Eddy. Lap after lap, he pulls up on the inside of him, challenging for that number one position. One would have to wonder if maybe Martin will have to go to the outside, Dave. No, I don't think there's any way he's going to get to the outside. Oh, and he just about spun out. You see what happened there? He's trying so hard, and he pinched that car down in there. We watched it earlier on. They run into the corner, and uh, he couldn't, couldn't get underneath Mike, and he tried so hard coming off that corner. It slipped a little bit, and he's got a long road to catch up now. Well, Mark Martin miraculously held on to it, pinched it down away too tight out of turn number four almost lost it got sideways smoke coming from the tires martin still out there but this time we got 20 laps to go with 380 laps completed and mark martin has now got to collect himself and his nerves to get back up there to challenge mike eddie mike has to be feeling good at this point because he has the advantage he's running strongly and seemingly no problems with his car at all well, that's, uh, that could seem that way, but I'm sure that probably the only thing that that did to Mark was get a little more adrenaline pumped in there. That sure had nothing to do with his nerves or his skill. Shows great skill on his part to be able to reel that car at 130 mile an hour and get it back under control. And they've got it back bumper to tail again here for these last closing laps. Well, you've raced with these drivers many times, Dave. In your opinion, which of these two drivers are most expert at making moves with slower traffic? Well, that would be pretty hard to say. Uh, obviously, the guy in the, in the lead in any situation, I think these guys are both equally as skilled. Uh, we'd have to think that uh, Mike Eddy, being a little older, has got a little bit more experience. 
than Mark. Uh, we see it show up at places like uh, uh, Anderson Speedway where it's really bumper to bumper all the time. But uh, Mark is back on his bumper here now and uh, it's going to be really, really hard to see who's at the advantage right at the moment. Well, I can tell you this, with 15 laps to go, Mark Martin hasn't decided to give this race to Mike Eddy, and I don't think he's going to decide to give it to him until the checkered flag has fallen and Mike was in front of him. Because if Mark Martin has got anything to do about it this afternoon here at the Dry Power 400, he's going to take over that number one position. And again, he challenges Mike Eddy as he goes down low on the inside, side by side with Mike Eddy. That time, even though he challenged him, he did it a little bit safer and didn't pinch down quite so tight in turn four. Yeah, that was, uh, there. Uh, there's not a lot of time to play with these guys now. You're going to have to make the move and do it, and it looks like uh, that spin or that run sideways through that corner might in fact taken a little bit of the edge off of Mark's tires because uh, he's not near as sticky, he's not near as able to keep the thing running up there as close as he was before that. So uh, maybe it unnerved him a little bit like we mentioned before and uh, whatever, but uh, he needs to get up there and he needs to be making that move pretty soon because uh, these laps are ticking away here. Well, just with the pure strength of a driver, Dave, after 400 laps or almost nearly 400 laps, does this challenge that Mark is putting on, does this wear him out? No, I don't think at this point. I think I'm sure that either one of those guys could continue this for another 400 laps because uh, the smell of victory is right here. And, uh, they might, in fact, be pretty tired by the time they get out of these cars, but uh, right now I don't think that the physical consideration is anything to bother neither one of these guys. Well, we're down in the latter stages of this race. 390 laps completed, 10 laps to go, and Mike Eddy from Midland, Michigan, former two-time national champion with American Speed Association, holding back the defending champion, uh, Mark Martin, winning this uh, championship in 1979 and it also in 1978. The contrast is that Mike Eddy has not won a feature race in the 1980 season with the American Speed Association. Mark Martin leads the way in feature wins with a total of five features. Eddy is hungry. Mike Eddy holds on now, but Mark Martin on the inside is trying to take it away from him, and they're in trouble. The leaders have hit the outside retaining wall, and Mike Eddy and Mark Martin have crashed. The leaders have crashed, and now, it appears as though Terry Sinekar, Here's your new leader, right? I didn't think that I would ever see that. Mark Martin and Mike Eddy getting together and both of them just rocketed into that outside retaining wall and Dave, it looks like they're probably both out of the race. But we gotta ask right there at the last, we know that you were going all out, you were closing in on Mike, you were side by side, lap after lap. Whenever slower traffic would come in front of you, we noticed you'd back off so that you could safely try to get around him, but something went wrong in turn two. What was it? Well, when I went in underneath him, uh, the minute the car broke traction, I got up against him and it was all over then. There was no way to get off. It was just uh, when the tires bite each other, uh, they, they get a hold of each other and it just it draws you in and I just couldn't get off at that point. There's nothing in the world that I'd rather, you know, no, that's the worst thing in the world ever in my mind to ever do is cost a man, a, you know, a win, especially a big win. And that was not my intentions. And um, didn't, I didn't know what the problem was and didn't know if there was a problem. You know, I thought maybe I just tried too hard. Uh, so there's, there's oil all underneath the hood and there's no reason for the oil cooler split wide open and it's, mounted in a place position where there's not any reason for it to get hurt in the crash. So we got reason to believe that the cooler could have split wide open because it split open. Martin and Eddie had completed, I believe, 392 laps at the time that the uh, crash occurred. We'll wait until the official finish to let you know exactly who came in in second and third position. But Terry Sinegar right now in the lead of the race in car number 37. And Terry will be coming down this time for the white flag signifying one lap to go. And Terry Sinegar in the lead. And the kid brother to Bob looks like he may have a dry power in his back pocket. It looks pretty good for him right now. They've been, I'll tell you what, I haven't been a long time. There he is for the checkered flag. Our winner here today, Terry Seneker, has been behind. He's been in the front. He's been behind. He's had problems. He's overcome them and, in fact, won the race here this afternoon. 
Terry Sinecker, you don't win a lot with the American Speed Association. As a matter of fact, never a race with ASA before, but you tagged the big one today. The dry power is yours. Everything went well for you. Evidently, nothing went wrong. Well, I, nothing serious went wrong. Had a little trouble, but you got to play that by ear as you go along. What type of problems did you have, and were they early in the race? Um, no, later in the race. Probably the last 100 laps. I got sideways once and uh, slid through the grass, but uh, I didn't lose a lap on the deal. I, in fact, I only lost a few positions, I think. It was just the car was getting loose, and I got in uh, too low and run over the bumps and just got sideways. But the reports were coming in there late that you had a bent wheel. Was this a result of that accident, or maybe is, is that what caused you to spin? No, I didn't get in any trouble there. It was after that, um, I bumped with, I think it was Ray Young in the second turn. We were uh, passing a lap car, and, and Ray got a little sideways. And uh, I bumped his left rear corner, and I didn't know whether I'd cut a tire or not. But it, I know it was steering harder, so it, it knocked the front end out of whack somewhat. What did the crew say to you at that last pit stop? Did they realize you were in such good shape? Yeah, well, there was a little controversy. One of them thought I was, and some thought I wasn't. But they figured I was up at least a couple laps, and all I had to do was cruise. Just finish the race, and I had it made. So you were hoping that all the bolts stayed together and the engine didn't fly apart? Yeah, I was worried about running out of gas because there's so many caution laps. The last five laps, you've got to run on the green. So I did come in and get some fuel. Well, the dry power is now over now, 400 laps behind you. You're the 1980 champion. Congratulations to you on a great ride. Thank you, Gary. It feels terrific. Terry Sinecker. You've been enjoying all-out action at its best. Auto racing from the American Speed Association. Join us again for more of America's fastest-growing sport.